Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things, and today I have a partial assembly project to share with you. It was a project I started when crafting with Linda, and I ran out of time and had to leave, so I thought it would be fun to finish this in a video with you guys. So it's sort of a saying goodbye. A couple of the products are retiring the end of the month, and then a couple of the products are new or carrying over. So this is an acetate project. So I have tear and tape, which I will share with you how I use that. I did some coloring with garden birdhouses and made a little scene. And then I got to use the new gilded leafing gold flakes. I'm scared to use them here because everyone says they are super floaty like ash and they will get all over the place and so it was fun because Linda has a nice big craft room and she hadn't opened hers so we got to get a big container open it together and yes they're compressed in the little canister they're in and they do uh, expand to a quite a large space so get a container that's big enough that you can then put your project in face down to it get the gilding flakes to adhere and then the trick is to remove them carefully in a nice whatever appealing way you want you can even then go back and add a little bit more to the leafing um, I used the uh, Stampin Ups sticky heat and stick embossing and I it took me a couple of tries to get the gilding in the way I wanted. So this was my third scene. So let's get to it. I will show you my scene. This is what I finally um, ended up with an amount of leafing that I liked. And I stamped everything in black, did some coloring, and then went back over with a Versa marked same branch and used since this is a photopolymer I was able to take this branch and visualize where it would line up pretty close it didn't have to be perfect with the black but I did want it to be very close and then Linda had a variety of brushes including a toothbrush and what I found for the application that I wanted which was the modeling, I was able to take a toothbrush and really go at this to remove a lot of the gold so that I got more of a distressed level of gold. The, mo the projects I've seen have more of a solid gold wherever it's at, and I really wanted to see if I could work this material um, until I got it exactly the way I wanted it, and this particular third take was perfect. So... Uh, it's a very fun product, but I will tell you, yes, it is very messy. And it and what happens at, after you've let it expand in a big container and you've used it a couple of times, the, the little flakes, they get smaller and smaller, but that does not affect how it works. Even if you had nothing but little tiny flakes left, um, they overlap each other and stick nicely uh, to the sticky heat and stick emboss powder. And so... I don't think it hurts to have them because we did probably five or six projects um, just experimenting with it. So I'm now going to share with you how to create an acetate front card. And I'm just working on this. So this DSP, it's called Fine Art DSP. It is retiring. The Golden Garden Acetate is retiring as well. And my uh, image is going to look like this. And when I build it up, you need a something to hide the, the fact that you've glued this on the back. And that's what this stitched so sweetly scalloped is going to be for me. I, I can see that I need to trim down my image a little bit, so I will go away and trim this down so that enough of the scallops show to look correct. I will then share with you using tear and tape for your sandwich and we will get this card done. And the, then the last step is in this case 
we have a busy pattern so I will want to take a here oh I should show you this was my first attempt the very first attempt I realized I really wanted the birdhouse to be the focal and it was not going to be able to be gold and so I just flipped it over like so and then made another one um, after I did this was my second experiment and I knew I was close and I did actually see that some of the gold adhered to the leaf and that's when I thought okay the leaves is where I want the gold to be so my focal is still in focus and clear so you're going to attach white behind the scalloped for people to write their message and then of course you will have your focal on the front so I'm going to trim this down and I will be right back all right I am back I have trimmed my focal to fit nicely right there so that the little bit of the scallops show all the way around evenly so I'm going to do the back of the card which is a sandwich and you need the backing so that you take your gold acetate and you're going to adhere it to whatever your DSP you're using for the inside of the card and then you take and adhere everything to the back of the card all the way you're, you don't want this to open so we are going to do that process right now I have um, I believe you could use the stamp and seal plus but I am going to use up the rest of my tear and tape so the stamp and seal with the little plus is a an extra adhesive a stickier adhesive and I believe that it would be strong enough but like I said I have this and it's sitting around and there's only like two rolls of the of it left so I want to get it used up so first things first is to oh and then did I show you that you can do silver on the one side even though it's called golden garden it actually allows you to do silver or gold and I already when I was at Linda's peeled off there is a protective adhesive on the silver side and I already peeled it off so don't forget that or it just won't look as crisp I don't think it would hurt anything necessarily all right I am ready to adhere I've got one piece of this tear and tape along the back of the fine art DSP I need to look and make sure that everything lines up perfectly on all four sides and everything looks good it'll be difficult to trim either the DSP or the acetate after the fact so I am going to peel off the tear and tape I do have a bone folder here I will adhere them. I see that it moved a little bit. I probably cannot adjust it. So you'll want to go more carefully with this step. And here's what I see. It's tight on this side and a little bit loose on that side so I will have to be very careful see now everything's a little crooked I don't believe this isn't going to be seen and the acetate actually has some some give even with the tear and tape so I am going to be able to repair this on the fly without having to cut which is my preference I don't want to have to cut anything so making sure it's really snugged up there and 
and re-adhering. Oh, and there you go. That's perfect. So it does appear that even though tear and tape on paper is really permanent, you have a little bit of leeway with the acetate. And I was able to peel the acetate up very carefully, and that is perfect. So the next step for me is going to be to put a strip of tear and tape along the top. And then I can use regular adhesive on this orange part that's going to sandwich to the balmy blue background. Try to be more careful. I see this corner's a little mushed. I'm gonna see. There, that'll be fine. That's the joys of transportation. Okay, so here's a little tiny bit left over on the bottom. I am going to trim that off right now. And I'll be right back. All right, I trimmed all that off with my little mini trimmer. Now I am going to prepare, this goes behind the acetate and I'm going to not go really close to the edge because I don't want the tape lines to show. I will center it. And I will tell you there's a little bit of give on this as well. If you don't get it perfect, you can uh, pull it off and adjust it. It may take the gold off, but it is going to be taking the gold off behind the focal, so it won't hurt anything. But as it is, I think I'm good. So... There is the completed front, minus some embellishing. All right, I have prepared some materials so that I can finish this card completely with you. I have some embellishments for the front, and then I have my inside. I've created my scene. I'm going to add a couple of the birds on the inside. And it comes with a nice sentiment that is perfect for birthdays. Now, let's see if I put the birds close enough. I think that's close enough. I don't mind them being really close to the edge. So that is going to be the inside. I need to trim it down a tiny bit. It is the correct width almost. Alright, so I've got my inside 
trimmed down, I will go ahead and apply it. I trimmed it down a little bit farther so that I have more forgiveness if I don't center it just right. I don't want to have to move it. And I am a stickler for things being lined up properly, so this just gives me a little more breathing room. Makes it go quicker. That way I can just eyeball it. There you go, so you can't see it. I created a little bow to put down here. And I have some embellishments. I'm going to use the bumblebee squares with the gold circles and see if I like how that comes out. This guy is twisted a little bit, so. So here's a tip. If you find that your twine, whether it's Baker's twine or this gold, wants to loop in on itself and curl like a hose does if it has too much of a curl, you can rotate your strand. So I have taken, because this was curled, it was like this. That's what it wanted to do. And what I did is I curled the string the opposite direction so that now I have a nice loop and it is not wanting to do a curl and ruin my loop. A curl white is when it does this. So that's what it did when I first set it down then you might have missed that I did my twirl and now that I've twirled it, it is perfect. So that is a really big tip for working with Baker's twine and these kind of 3D type metallic twines. Now I'm going to play with, I love mixing my embellishments just to make it that much more special. So I will probably only use these small ones Put like one here. See, that goes nicely with this is so saffron, light and dark. I'll probably do something down here and maybe. Now, the question is do I really want more than one? of these bumblebee gems. It is a pretty fancy card, so I think it can handle it. That looks very cute. And then he has to come up a little bit That finishes off this project. Please leave your questions, comments, and suggestions on this video or over on my blog. I will have all of the supplies used today on my blog. Please like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.